Juliana and I ran across this equation while doing our homework the other day, and I was surprised there wasn't really a good illustrative explanation that we could find anywhere on the internet, so we're going to provide one here. Basically, the sequence describes the solubility of silver chloride in ammonia, but on the surface doesn't seem to follow the usual rules of covalent bonding that we see in a balanced chemical equation. The explanation requires the introduction of a few new terms that you may or may not be familiar with, including coordinate sites and coordinate covalent or data of bonding. Before we get into the details, let's start with a quick review of chemical bonds. The type of bonds that we are all familiar with from our high school chemistry class are called covalent bonds, where each of the atoms shares one of its valence electrons with its atomic neighbor, allowing each to complete their valent subshells for molecular stability. For most of these atoms, that magical number is eight orbiting electrons. The exception is hydrogen, the smallest of all atoms, only requiring two electrons to complete its lone S subshell. Carbon has four orbiting electrons and needs four more to be complete. Nitrogen has five and needs three more. Oxygen six and needs two more. And of course, hydrogen has one and only needs one more. The simplest hydrocarbon, methane, consists of a central carbon atom with four valence electrons requiring four more electrons to complete its unfilled orbitals, which is attached to four hydrogen atoms with one valence electron, each requiring one additional electron to complete its unfilled subshell. The carbon shares one of its four electrons with each of the hydrogen atoms, giving them their requisite two, and in return, the hydrogen share their lone electron with the carbon, giving this atom a total of eight. Similarly, the simple water molecule has a single oxygen atom with six valence electrons bound to two hydrogen atoms. Sharing their electrons again gives oxygen its magical eight, and each of the hydrogens their two. Everyone's happy. Since each atom is sharing at least one of its valence electrons with its neighbor, this type of bond is called covalent. Now let's look at some of our metal atoms, silver, iron, and gadolinium. The abundant electron clouds surrounding metal atoms are responsible for some of the common features we associate with metals such as heat and electrical conductivity, shininess, reflectivity, malleability, and ductility. They can also explain the chemical binding properties illustrated in our silver chloride formula. Even though our formula involves silver, I want to start with iron to introduce some of these new terms. Most metals have their outermost or valence electrons in an S orbital, which they will freely give up to achieve a stable octet of electrons in their outermost energy shell. These positively charged metal ions, or cations, then become very electron selfish, unwilling to share their valence electrons with their fellow atoms, but are more than willing to take electrons from other atoms, most notably oxygen and nitrogen. They receive these electrons at what we call coordinate sites, of which iron has six. Looking at water, you can see the molecule is polar with the positively charged hydrogens asymmetrically binding to the oxygen. The two free electrons on the far side of the oxygen make this portion of the molecule slightly negative. These two free orbital electrons are the ones that oxygen shares with iron to form a chemical bond. Since both electrons originate from the oxygen atom with no contribution from iron, this is called a coordinate covalent or dative bond and will represent that bond with this dashed arrow to indicate the asymmetric participation of the atoms. Other examples of dative bonds include the oxygen molecule that makes up 21% of our atmosphere and various nitrogen molecules which again, because of the relative asymmetric bonding, creates a polar free pair of electrons that the atom is willing to donate to the iron atom. The donating molecules are called ligands, and each metal atom has a coordination number that will determine how many sites are available for ligand binding. Again, iron has a coordination number of 6, gadolinium has 9, and our silver atom has 2. The most common coordination numbers are 2, 4, and 6, but numbers from 1 to 15 exist in nature. Looking back at our equation, our ammonia solvent consists of three hydrogen atoms bound to a single nitrogen. Doing our electron accounting, all the atoms are happy with each hydrogen having two orbiting electrons and the nitrogen eight. But notice the asymmetric pyramidal binding of the hydrogen atoms on one side of the nitrogen. This asymmetry produces a polar molecule slightly positive on the hydrogen side and slightly negative on the side of the paired but unshared nitrogen electrons. 
The silver chloride bond is ionic, but since the silver and chlorine atoms are close to each other on the periodic table, less ionic than sodium chloride where the two constituent atoms are essentially on opposite ends of the table. Remember, for electron stability, silver is happy to give up its single S-shell valence electron and donate it to the chlorine atom, thus completing its valence shell. This gives the silver atom a plus one charge and the chlorine a minus one charge. The polarity of the ammonium molecule is then able to pull apart the silver and chlorine atoms. Again, ammonia is a stable molecule with completed orbitals of all of its component atoms, so it doesn't need to react with any other atoms or molecules. However, the nitrogen is willing to donate both of its unshared electrons to the silver cation, forming coordinate covalent or dative bonds. Since there are two coordination sites, two ammonia molecules attach to each silver atom. Both ammonia molecules are electrically neutral and the silver cation has a plus one charge. Adding up all the charges produces a net charge of plus one for the entire complex and the chloride anion with its extra electron has a net charge of minus one. These dative bond complexes between silver and ammonia explain why silver chloride is soluble in ammonia but not in water. So there's your graphical explanation of the solubility of silver chloride in ammonia.